there to listen in or any other developments that will be taking place. But for now, though, I want us uh, to have a conversation with Kisumu Governor Professor Anyang Nyongo. Thank you very much, uh, sir, for joining us this, more, this uh, evening. So before we get uh, to uh, a reaction about the postponement of uh, that election tomorrow, what can you tell us about the situation on the ground? Because the whole day we've been seeing uh, quite an engagement between police and uh, the residents there. Well, that situation really has not been good at all. One, because uh, I think the police and the security forces were necessarily harsh and brutal. I told the security forces much earlier that an engagement with the leadership and the public much earlier before the day of the election would be much better. Rather than show uh, might and force with lorries full of military men and Mugiki militias, arriving in the town as if the Third World War had arrived in Kisumu. I think this actually upset the people. If this was going to be a free and fair election, we'd rather see more IBC officials than elements of state security. Uh, the fact that the force was here, it meant it was not going to be a free and fair election, but a forced election, forced consent. And I think that is not what is envisaged in our constitution nor election laws. So I think the state itself that was responsible for triggering rather rebellion and resistance from the people. Right, Governor, uh, even talking about that election, what is your reaction and NASA generally about the postponement of uh, the election in the four counties tomorrow? Personally, I don't think postponement is a good word. Abandoning would be much better. I think they are just kind of uh, trying to be sarcastic about saying they are postponing an election because you don't use the same method and get different results. That's the mm -hmm. general law that we know. And I think what they're going to do is the same thing, beef up security, have uh, frightened IBC officials clustered in a school room somewhere and hope that people will arrive and vote. It doesn't just work that way. Mm -hmm. uh, NASA said that here we are not going to vote. People know that there's no vote. October, no election, that has been the slogan. And I think it's rather unfortunate that the IBC and the security forces should feel it fit to force people to vote. I think that's not a good idea at all. I think let's call it a day. Let's hope that uh, the IBC will organize itself. We shall follow the law and the constitution. When there's a consensus among Kenyans that there should be an election, there will be an election. But if Mr. Kenyatta wants to stay in power with a sham election, so be it. But I think he will simply serve as an illegitimate president. All right, so are you saying that as the leadership of uh, Kisumu County that indeed if IBC comes up with a new date that even in your capacity you will still not uh, be agreeable to an election in that county? I'm not agreeable. I'm not just about to change my mind. Mm -hmm. So as far as I'm concerned, our status quo of rejecting the election stays mm -hmm. because I don't think there's an election where the IBC itself is not prepared. You have seen what has happened. Even the IBC officials in this county will tell you confidentially that they themselves don't think they are prepared for this election. And more than that, as I speak now, Mugiki militia went from Kisumu City to Awasi Township, to Moroni Township, to Chemelil, to Kopere, to Songo brutalizing people, they go into people's houses, they take food, they break doors, they break, rape women. A terrorized public like that is not one that's just about to turn around and vote for anybody in a couple of days. I think we need to bring the situation to normal by withdrawing the forces back to where they belong and preparing a proper election by the IBC. I think we're in a state of siege here in Kisumu. Tomorrow morning, I'm actually heading to Kericho to go and meet my colleague, Governor Chep Kwan, so that the two of us can tra travel to the border between Kenya and Kericho mm -hmm. and talk to the two communities and tell them that we don't want conflict. The two of us are agreed, in as much as the Governor uh, Stephen Sang of, of Nandi has also agreed that we really don't want our people mm -hmm. to fight over nothing except an imposed rule by somebody who thinks that some people must vote whether they like it or not. Right. I think Voting is a citizen's right. It is also a citizen's right not to vote. That is guaranteed in the Constitution.
Right. You mentioned uh, Mungiki militia. How can you ascertain that indeed, uh, you know, the people who uh, were doing all these acts of atrocities are actually drawn from that militia group? I don't believe that a professional policeman trained in Kiganjo would behave like the one I'm seeing in the city of Kisumu. If that is the case, then the standard of the policeman has really deteriorated. And if that is the case, then independent police oversight commission or authority is not doing its work. These characters are definitely not policemen, nor army men for that matter. For example, yesterday in Jaramogi Ogingodinga teaching a referral hostel, a woman arrived with cut wounds on the head. And the medical professionals say this is not a rungu, this is not a button, mm -hmm. this is something like a Maasai sword. I have never known that one of the weapons, one of the instruments that the Kenya police use is a Maasai sword. That is something that definitely must come from Malaysia rather than the Kenyan police. And I have asked former commissioner, uh, police commander, former police commander for Kisumu County, Commander Titus Yoma, who is no longer here. Mm -hmm. And I have asked Commander Kamau, who is currently here, under whose command does this militia come? None of them has offered me any answer whether they come under their command. They have concluded that this, this is a militia brought here by somebody or some forces to do a particular work. Terrorize right. us, rape our women, eat meat from our butcheries, and I think this cannot be a professional people from the disciplined forces. They are undisciplined. Right. Uh, finally, uh, Professor, let's talk about the message that you're sending tonight to the young people who are on the streets. Uh, today they were there engaging uh, very harshly with police officers. So now that the election has been postponed, what is your message to them? Should they still go on the streets and continue with the protests? They were engaging the police because last night this militia went to Obunga and Nyalenda at night and broke into houses, took property. They went to Nyalenda, broke into a bar, drank beer and whiskey, gin and all the spirits, took away with 80,000 shillings from the cashier and went away. That incident was reported to the police. Nothing has happened. The young man, men come out more in defense of their communities rather than to engage with the police because for them, the people in uniform on the streets are no different from the ones that invaded their homes at night or sometimes in the afternoon. So, look, you must understand mm -hmm. why people are rebelling. When you have a force of occupation in you, you'd rather fight them outside on the streets than allow them to come into your homes. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Governor Fukisumu, Professor Nyang Nyang, just bringing us up to speed, really, with what the situation currently is. If you have been following the pictures, really, and what has been happening on the ground there, there has been heavy confrontation throughout the day, leading to a number of injuries uh, and people being maimed, really. Uh,